The information that is pouring in on what has happened in Kerala, three people have been killed and over 50 have been injured in an explosion that took place at a convention centre in Kerala's Kochi yesterday. The blast happened during a prayer meeting of Jehovah's Witnesses in Ernakulam district. Yesterday, a man named Dominic Martin claimed responsibility for the attack, confessing the same on his Facebook Live video. And NewsX has received exclusive information as to how this man actually planned the entire attack. We take our viewers through what is it that we've learned as far as this man's work was concerned. Sources to NewsX uh, tell us four IEDs were used in the prayer meet Blast. So this is the first bit of information that has come to us uh, from our sources that a total of four IEDs were used in the prayer meet blast. If we move on and let's keep it going, uh, we've been told uh, as per our sources that the accused in fact learned how to make bombs online. So this is the next of course bit of information that has come our way that the accused Dominic Martin learned how to make these bombs online as per his own confession. Number three, IEDs were made of low-grade explosives is what we're learning from our sources. Of course, they were put inside tiffin boxes, so that explains that they were low-grade explosives. At least four litres of petrol pouches were used for each bomb, which caused that massive explosion that we saw in the videos that were circulating yesterday. So four pouches. Let's keep it going. Uh, next bit of information. Petrol was used to make it an incendiary device. That's another bit of information that has come our way. The batteries, wires, circuits and mobile phones have now been recovered as well by the cops as far as the investigation is concerned. We've also learned that radio frequency devices were used to trigger the explosive devices inside the convention center. We've also learned that uh, jute bags, in fact, as per the information that has come our way, let's keep it going. Uh, we would, we've been told that mobile devices, a mobile call was in fact used to provide the Trigger. We'll try to understand what that means with our experts as well. But uh, we've also been told that jute bags were in fact used to pack the IEDs and smuggle them inside the convention center. So like I said, he used different boxes in which these uh, IEDs were placed. Three blasts, we were told as per reports, took place. And four IEDs as per our sources have been used. The motive was in fact to burn down the entire center so the motive was to not just cause harm to the center because if he wanted to cause harm to the center he could have uh, probably committed arson but he didn't do that the accused did not do that the culprit did not do that he went ahead and planted bombs in the middle of a prayer meeting so the motive was not simply to burn down the entire center the motive was to cause significant harm to the convention center where the blast took place. Before we move on to some uh, breaking news uh, on the matter, let me quickly rope in our guests on this uh, exclusive information that has come our way and then we'll address uh, the breaking news. I have Major General Gigi Dvivedi with us and also Mr. Ellen Rao. Uh, Major General Dvivedi, what do you make of uh, the information that has come out uh, as far as this particular blast is concerned? Uh, the fact that the accused learned how to make a bomb online, uh, four liters of petrol pouches were used, uh, the batteries and uh, you know several batteries, wire circuits and mobile phones have been uh, recovered, radio frequency devices were used to trigger an explosion. Could a man have done all of this alone as per you, simply by watching videos online? First and foremost, uh, it's very unfortunate that by act of some eccentric person. Uh, we have lost three innocent lives and uh, almost 50 of our fellow citizens have been injured. So that's uh, first and foremost, I like to share the grief uh, with those affected families. Having said that, I think you are a very pertinent question and you also gave a very pertinent background. You see, let's see what see the whole sequence, you know, one at a time. First and foremost, this person, you know, so-called uh, Dominic Martin, 
had a very clear idea as to what he has to do, how he has to go about it. Second, he had the required expertise to cause significant damage uh, to this in this prayer meeting. So he had the basic knowledge of how to assemble an ID, that is, improvised explosive device. He has used the gunpowder petrol, which makes a very incendiary kind of mixture, and uh, it is lethal. I mean, it was that means the intent was to cause as much damage as possible. Thirdly, the way he has executed it, very I think professionally, that he has placed these uh, IDs under the seats, then he has uh, detonated remotely. Means it is a remote detonation. So I would say that this person had fairly good idea, expertise, exactly knew what to do, how to go about it. So overall, it's a very well planned operation that he executed. Now, was he just a lone wolf or is he part of a larger conspiracy? It's too early to conjecture. But nonetheless, I think this needs to be investigated very thoroughly because it has a very lethal and I would say very damaging background or the intent because if there are more people involved, that means that they want to destabilize the state. And as it is, we know that Kerala has been a victim of radical elements and they have been the courts off and on. So all I can say is this operation has been executed very professionally. This person, Dominic Martin, knew exactly what to go about it and he had the intent to cause maximum damage and uh, this should be investigated whether it was a lone wolf attack or was it part of the larger conspiracy. There we go. But Mirjan Chiribhivedi, as far as modus operandi is concerned, sir, and that's of course a, a, you know, an area of probably your expertise, you know that better than uh, I do. As far as modus operandi goes, what, what is your assessment that does this look like a lone wolf attack or given the sophistication of the attack, it looks like there could possibly be more people involved and this man is just, uh, uh, you know, uh, been put forward possibly as a scapegoat or he's the only one who's come forward and there were others that were backing him. The simple reason why I ask this is because if it were, we've seen examples of lone wolf attacks as far as shootings are concerned. Uh, that happened quite regularly now in the United States of America. Uh, or even a knife attack. Somebody enters a mall or a convention center or a school with a knife uh, and they operate that way. But the sophistication, as you said, of the attack, does that point really in the direction of this being a lone wolf attack that a single man worked on this alone for several months? Oh, well, Devika, this is a very pertinent question. And uh, having operated in number of insurgency, counterinsurgency operations, the couple of things that stand out. First and foremost, the individual was very clear as to what is his intent. Second is he had right expertise to execute this, and uh, he has done a lot of uh, work. He has, I mean, he has carried out some trials, uh, you know, to assemble the devices, carry it into the right place, remotely detonate it. I mean, he was a definitely a professional. He is a professional in this game. Now, the coming to whether it is a lone wolf or whether there are people behind it, well, I all I can say is that we need to invest investigate. On face of it, the way he has carried it out, I have little my own sense of uh, premonition that uh, there could be a bigger game plan behind it. But it's too early to predict. All I can say is done very professionally by a person who knew exactly how to go about it and the cool nerves that he carried out, I think uh, this definitely was a very premeditated, well-planned act and that could have caused much more damage than what has been done. I think we are very fortunate that the casualty has been low, otherwise the casualty could have been very high and phenomenal. There we go. Absolutely. So I'll come to you in just a moment and Mr. Ellen Rao as well. Some breaking news coming in on that note. As CM Pinare Vijayan uh, met the victims of the bomb blast uh, at uh, Kalamaseri today, he said, and I quote, hospitals are working with a lot of dedication and connection with the investigation. What happened to Martin, the man who surrendered before the police, has come out. The DGP is supervising the investigation. It is proceeding in a good way. All party meeting had a good response. Media has done a good job in dealing with this matter. Kerala was able to stand alone uh, in dealing with the incident. Let's quickly listen in. 
എന്ത് ചെയ്യണം എന്നതിനെക്കുറിച്ച് ആദ്യമൊരു പ്രസ്താവന ഇവർ നടത്തുന്നുണ്ട് എല്ലാ എല്ലാ കൂടിച്ചേരലിലും ഈ യഹോവ സാക്ഷികളുടെ യോഗത്തിൽ ആദ്യമൊരു പ്രസ്താവന നടത്തുന്നത് ഇങ്ങനെയാണ് ചെയ്യേണ്ടത് ആരും ഓടാൻ പാടില്ല നല്ല ശാന്തമായിട്ട് പോകണം അങ്ങനെയെല്ലാം നമ്മൾ കാര്യങ്ങൾ ഒരു അപകടം സംഭവിക്കുന്ന നില വരുമ്പോൾ എന്ത് ചെയ്യണം എങ്ങനെ പെരുമാറണം എന്നതിനെക്കുറിച്ചൊരു ബോധവൽക്കരണം എല്ലാ പരിപാടികളിലും News Kerala Chief Minister's office has informed that beyond what Dominic uh, Martin has admitted in the investigation into the explosion the police is currently investigating if there was any other motive as well top police officials including the DGP are conducting this uh, probe and the investigation of course continues to go well meanwhile more news comes in uh, when asked if the state government is properly handling the issue kerala governor arif mohammed khan says this is not the right time to ask this sort of a question maybe after a few days if there is any lapse then you can raise the question let's quickly listen in to what the governor has said this is not the, this is not the right time to ask this question maybe after a few days uh, if there is any lapse then you can raise this question today in fact I was keen to come yesterday only, then, but I was told that the patient's condition is very serious and this is not the time to disturb them. Therefore, we decided to come today. Otherwise, I had reached here yesterday in the evening, late in the evening. So, we, uh, this is the time, you know, th there are two things. One, expression of sympathy. or your your feelings your heart goes out to all the victims and secondly we should not tolerate the culture of violence all right a pertinent point there raised by the kerala governor where he says that there needs to now be no tolerance of a culture of violence or radicalization uh, in the state and of course in india as well ellen rao let me bring you to the conversation sir of course uh, everybody agrees that the investigation is going on and that the investigation uh, investigative agencies must take their own time uh, to of course explain what really has happened what went wrong was there a larger motive so on and so forth but i just like to understand from you given the sort of history that kerala has had and the fact that the state has been a victim of radicalization what do you think would be required for the chief minister perhaps at this point in time to do in order to ensure that uh, the state comes out of that cycle and that label of allowing radicalization uh, to sort of flourish yes devika uh, this very seems to be very uh, uh, interesting that chief minister of kerala has come up with a very good statement very political statement that they are against this terrorism and then uh, they are all out and they are they have sympathy with the um, casualty people and the injured persons but uh, if you go by the history of kerala the radicalization in kerala is much more than any other state in in india and the, uh, this uh, soft uh, corner uh, uh, to the terrorist activities um by the people of kerala maybe by because of the organizers organizations are being um, uh, supported uh, by some people there most uh, probably that pfi the, uh, this popular front of india which is remnant in uh, is very prevalent in kerala state and other isi is is um, uh, ground worker or ground workers underground workers are also working there then the, it's very uh, need of the hour that the intelligence uh, intelligence agencies of the state and the police they should have a very heavy hand on these type of people who are being uh, their, their sources are uh, to be deployed that to find out such people who are being radicalized and the person who are radicalizing this uh, terrorist activities here in the uh, islamic radicalization is most most rampant in this kerala state so uh, this this incident is an eye opener to the, uh, the police to the uh, uh, government of kerala and the people of kerala also because all these uh, three innocent guys have been died and so many people have been injured and there is a huge damage and then uh, that much more damage could have been uh, done uh, uh, but uh, thank god it's not so much of that uh, high intensity bomb but um, um, th that really 
it needs to be um, uh, rethink about the uh, uh, strategies by the police and the uh, that uh, intelligence agencies of the state and uh, uh, this thorough interrogation of this uh, uh, this mr martin will reveal what he is saying is correct or not uh, because uh, if he is saying that he has self made this ied then he has to explain how um, how he assemble all these things that i must explain what is the ied improvise explosive divide it contains five important components in that number one is the container which you have said the tiffins were there number two the explosive and uh, that uh, in, <coughs> incident is that uh, this item that is a petrol bomb and some explosives that is required then number three the circuit which to be completed that circuit which has to be uh, that uh, wire with the circuits that is to be completed to um, detonate that explosion and then in that of, of, after that there is the, in most of the uh, ieds there are sharpness there are splinters which uh, uh, with the uh, sound they blow up and then they work like a uh, guns and the um, that bellets like that and then the most important is the triggering of that um, uh, initiation of that uh, ignition the triggering here in that is the mobile phone that can be remotely triggered this bomb can be remotely triggered with the switching of that uh, mobile there is a device that which uh, when the uh, mobile from outside will be switched then this uh, ignition that circuit will be complete and the blast will take place so all these things uh, what he is saying that he has learned all these things from the uh, internet uh, by doing all these things that can be uh, uh, that is the early stage to believe this thing that he may be a wolf attack or maybe uh, some part of some larger conspiracy maybe some organization because as 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 i have experienced that such type of blast are never uh, done by some individual with his own uh, satisfying his own ambitions or own purpose there must be some organization that is uh, most likely in india the maximum bomb blast have been completed by the terrorist organizations which have been having their um, a larger interest larger uh, perspectives for that but still the investigating agency that is nia i think that they have ace detectives in nia they must be interrogating this uh, domkin market martin and they will come out with the truth with very soon and uh, if he is alone that is also um, um, will be coming uh, to light after this thorough interrogation and what he is saying that is to be corroborated with the other facts and circumstances uh, what is say what is claiming right absolutely then, okay yes, yes, major jeevi vedi bringing you back in the conversation sir i just like to understand from you a couple of things sir firstly how do we ensure that we can then have a conversation about uh, what has happened in kerala and of course you can't dismiss entirely kerala's history kerala's past uh, the fact that the state has been a victim of radicalization in the past as well how do we have this conversation without making it seem as though the whole country is coming together to hate kerala or say that kerala is a problem because that's unfortunately what's happening right now that the moment you start talking about kerala's past uh, be it isis recruitments be it the pfi be it the, ve the very recent pro palestine rally that allowed a hamas leader uh, to address uh, you know the rally virtually the moment you bring up this past people say why are you doing that because now you're trying to label kerala uh, as a particular type of state uh, well devika absolutely because you it's very unfair that if you are taking the you know such a view that you are implicating the complete state now that's not the uh, i think right way and this very unfair because there are certain elements and you have to identify the element because public by and large is peaceful public by and large does not take any position they are uh, neutral but the point is that there are certain forces those forces are either radicalized or they have a large intent or they have external support now these are the people who act as the point person and then they carry out such activities and the uh, larger design of we have inimical neighbors we know how pakistan is actually has been uh, unleashing the proxy war and for proxy war there is no one theater it's not only jammu and kashmir punjab the whole india is a theater so they pick and choose which uh, you know area is more vulnerable where they can actually put in certain elements like isis elements were very active in kerala all i can say is that our intelligence has to be firstly almost full proof we have to be proactive because reactive means that you are already taking a hit so we need to be proactive 
and this proactive intelligence is not only to be within the state or within the country but we have to have tentacle outside because most of the play times the source of the whole game is across the border so all i can say is first and foremost is very unfair and we should not do it the whole state should never be implicated we need to identify such elements actually who are instigating and who are causing the problem and for that we need to be very proactive please remember today the internal security is as important as the external security and enemy across will always exploit your vulnerabilities so we need to be very very careful and we need to have our guards up always and ensure that we identify those elements who are the trouble creators those elements who are trying to cause harm to the country and never take a view on the larger society larger state that will be very self defeating absolutely and vision ji ji we the coming to the politicians a bit because of course politics has played a role in the past as well in the way the state has functioned what really do you feel then becomes the test of the politicians at this point in time both at the state and the center level and what is it that they need to do uh, what is the assurance that needs to be given so that one gets away from this uh, you know the, the narrative that people feel that has been created about kerala see narratives are not made in a vacuum right there must be something that has happened that has allowed for people to add to that narrative now whether they've done so wrongly that must be called out of course but uh, my basic question being what is it then that a kerala chief minister needs to do who was sitting on a dharna in new delhi for palestine when this happened in his state well uh, devika first and foremost i think our politicians and polity must understand that the nation security cannot be bartered for narrow political interest national security is supreme and for that all political parties their own ideology difference apart must stand together because we cannot barter the nation security secondly we have to have our own national interest in mind rather than looking at the national interest of the others so where india's national interest lie we must have a party line and especially when it concerns the security and you rightly said that narratives don't uh, you know come up or narrative don't play out suddenly there is a dot set is joined and these dots definitely indicate that the radicalism in kerala has taken roots and we had instances and this needs to be nipped in the bud because we cannot allow this kind of you know state state of affairs to uh, take place and for that politicians state machinery and all the intelligence must come together and my watch word is please do not play with the security of the nation and do not uh, place your political interest above the nation they must be secondary and uh, that's how we can uh, manage this men- menace and at the end of it we need to be a very proactive to curb this state of affairs because if we take a soft line the nation will pay a very heavy price they will pay. absolutely i thank both of our fa- panelists for joining us uh, on this broadcast to take uh, the story forward and present us with their perspective on what's happened in kerala for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon